Hello everybody, my name is Alistair Challens, I'm Marketing Executive at Excitec. Welcome to the webinar today. Uh, Drax Strongitharm from Autodesk is with us and he's going to be taking the bulk of it. I hope you can hear myself okay. Uh, you've got the title there, Introduction to Autodesk Navis Works for Construction Sequencing and Clash Detection. Hi there, yes, so um, Drax Strongitharm here from Autodesk. I'm the Industry Solutions Manager uh, for Transportation in particular. So, what we're going to go through, we're going to go through uh, a couple of challenges and trends, uh, BIM itself, um, if you were on yesterday you will have seen a little bit of this content, but there's some new. Uh, the value of really BIM for construction, because Navisworks is one of these products that is most valuable in the construction space, as well as in the design space, and also we'll uh, show you how it all works together. So the challenges that are facing everybody is literally just keeping business going and, and attracting new business and um, basically being able to uh, run a, a coordinated company and uh, working under the pressures of uh, today's economic climate. So a lot of construction is really wasted out in the field, um, but basically through errors of how uh, the designs from disparate disciplines come together on site. and you will find quite often that things do not fit. So we waste materials, we waste time, plan is out on, on the site, not being used, and people as well. So, you know, your design may be quite good, but when it comes to uh, the field, when it comes together, it's a different picture. So there's a, generally it's been uh, noted that 30% is wasted, literally, in the field due to these uh, coordination errors, etc. So some of the trends, like BIM, is a word that everybody is now hearing about. Um, everybody has their own interpretations of what BIM is about. Uh, there is alternative delivery methods in terms of contracts to how we work together, joint ventures, for example, rather than just design and build. Prefabrication, so like if we look at that building there on the right, you know, each floor could be literally slid in, it constructed in, in a factory and brought to site and slid straight into the each cell. So things that are changing the way like hotels are being built currently. Mandates from the owner, they're changing what they expect from you because they're looking at the whole life cycle cost of the asset that they're paying for. So how do they manage it? If things going to work? More efficiency? Um, and it kind of leads into the sustainability of the project. You know, clients are looking for sustainability awards in terms of making this uh, project stand out for the person that's going to uh, buy or rent the space. So a little bit on BIM. So if you've seen the press for the last couple of years, um, BIM is everywhere um, and in all different flavours. And it's been really led, especially in the UK, by this chap here called Paul Morell. He's chief construction advisor to the government. And he's really said that BIM is the way forward for all government projects. By 2016, if you're not using a BIM process, um, you won't be invited to tender for the work it's because they're looking for the overall life cycle of the cost of the, the asset that the buildings. Not just a cheap design, they want a design that's going to last, perform and also just get best value for money. So there's a couple of nice articles online that you can search for using your search engines. So a government construction strategy article by the Cabinet Office and also there's a BIM working group um, which put a uh, a much more readable uh, kind of paper together as well. So really worth having a look through this because this is their initial expectations as, as BIM evolves in, in the government. How does this apply to private um, work? Well, you know, most people look at how the government procure projects as, you know, a good way because they're obviously trying to save money and look for a different um, value back from what they uh, have designed. So site developers are, are looking at the same kind of thing. So BIM is not a piece of software, it, you know, it's not Revit neither, which is generally a preconception that we get at Autodesk. Um, you know, Revit's been a very popular product in, in the architecture, building and structural space, uh, but it's not the complete thing. BIM is a process of how all the different disciplines work together and really build a virtual model of the project before we take it to construction. And then BIM kind of carries on from there. It's not just about the design. It's how it's constructed and how it's also managed afterwards. So it's quite a large topic, really, and uh, one that everybody's probably got their own uh, preconceptions. 
So here's a diagram that's been around for a good while, uh, created by a client, HOK, and it, looking at how um, you know your impact on time and cost and effort uh, comes together. So over time, your ability to change any design is reducing dramatically, and the cost of those changes is increasingly um, going up over time as well because you may be out on site. If you look at the white curve there, that is kind of the traditional decision process and design process where drawings are brought together on site and there's very little time to make any changes because well, materials are there. So the, the whole purpose of BIM really is to slide the whole decision process about how the project's designed and built before they actually go on site. And that's how that diagram works.